Hello all, this is a demo class for all the GCC Pharmacist Licensure exam. This is part of Medventure Dr. Andrews Academy. We'll be discussing about renin angiotensin aldosterone system or otherwise known as RAS system. All the pharmacists out there who knows about antihypertensive drugs or hypertension will be familiar with this term. Firstly, we'll be looking into the pathophysiology of renin angiotensin aldosterone system. As you can see in the image, we have renin, we have angiotensinogen, we have angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2. When our, blood, when our blood pressure in the body is dropped, we call it as hypotension or when the blood volume is reduced, we call it as hypovolemia. When this happens, our body does some mechanism to cope up with the situation. One among them is RAS or renin angiotensin aldosterone system. It maintains the blood pressure of your body. When there is a hypotensive condition, beta-1 receptors of your kidney gets activated and it releases renin. Remember, renin is the first hormone that is released by your kidney. Next, we have angiotensinogen. When the kidney is releasing renin, we have liver that is stimulated to produce angiotensinogen. This angiotensinogen, in the presence of renin, is converted to angiotensin 1 and that is converted to angiotensin 2. This is the whole process of how RAS works. Remember the first hormone is renin from your kidneys and second is angiotensinogen. With the help of renin, angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1 and with the help of ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme from your lungs converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Before go going into details about angiotensin 2, Let's talk about ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme. This is released from your lungs. So to maintain your BP, we have kidneys, we have liver, and now we're talking about lungs. What does ACE do in the lungs? It has role in cough, not directly in inducing cough, but it has role in metabolizing bradykine, which produces cough. In case of an allergen entering your respiratory system, our body reacts to it by producing antibodies. Remember the antigen-antibody reactions. So the allergen is an antigen. When it is entering into your respiratory system, our lungs produces bradykine, which acts like a self-healing substance, and it produces cough or we sneeze, thereby expelling out this allergen inside the respiratory system. So bradykine produces cough or sneeze to get this allergen out of your lungs. That is why whenever you're exposed to any kind of dust or allergen, you immediately sneeze or you have some irritations around the nose. It is to expel this allergen out of the lungs. ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme metabolizes the bradykinin. Too much cough is also not accepted. So ACE is important to metabolize this bradykine so that the cough is reduced. When we go into details about this topic, especially when we learn about angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor drugs, we learn that dry cough is the major side effect of AC inhibitors. Coming back to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 raises blood pressure by two mechanisms. First, it acts on the blood vessels. Secondly, it acts upon the adrenal gland. It acts on the blood vessel and it causes vasoconstriction. Imagine a pipe. A pipe, when it is squeezed, the water flow is restricted and there's a pressure buildup inside that pipe. Similarly, when your blood vessel is constricted or narrowed, there's a pressure buildup in the blood vessels and also the blood flow is restricted. This is how angiotensin 1 increases blood pressure by constriction of blood vessels. Secondly, it acts on the adrenal gland that is present on your kidney. What is adrenal gland? It is like a small cap on top of your kidneys. It releases aldosterone. Aldosterone is a mineralocorticoid. What does mineralocorticoid do? It increases the reabsorption of salt and water. That is NaCl and H2O. When this happens, it leads to increased reabsorption of sodium and water, which leads to an increase in blood volume and thereby increase the blood pressure. This is how, as a whole, renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system increases your blood pressure. Remember, 
your kidney produces renin, your liver produces angiotensinogen, your lungs gives you angiotensin converting enzyme. The angiotensin 2 acts on the blood vessels, causes vasoconstriction, increasing your blood pressure. Secondly, it acts on the adrenal gland to release aldosterone, which increases the blood volume and thereby increase your blood pressure. This is how RAS works. In case of hypertensive patient, we do not want an increase in blood pressure. Rather than that, we need a decrease in blood pressure. This is why we have antihypertensive drugs. It includes several antihypertensive drugs. So mainly we are discussing about renin inhibitor and AC inhibitors. Renin inhibitor examples are aliskyrin, remikyrin, enalkyrin. So in order to remember this, you can see that all of it ends with chyrin, chyrin, chyrin. So this is how you remember renin inhibitors. Next, we're talking about AC inhibitors. It all ends with pril, captopril, lisnopril, enalapril, ramipril, trantolapril, fosinopril, and quinalapril. Everything ends with pril. So this is how you remember AC inhibitor. Also, remember all the AC inhibitors except captopril and lisnopril's are prodrugs. It has to be converted. It has to be metabolized into its active form for its action. Now let's see what is diabetic nephropathy and why we use AC inhibitors and ARVS in diabetic nephropathy. Diabetic nephropathy is one of the complications of diabetes. If a patient is diabetic and he is also a hypertensive patient, there is a compelling indication that the patient has to use AC inhibitors or ARVS for the treatment of hypertension and also for prevention of diabetic nephropathy. Now let's see the diagnosis of diabetic nephropathy. If you observe the image, the image is of glomerulus and there's Bowman's capsule and there is also two arterioles, the afferent arterioles and the efferent arterioles. The afferent arterioles brings blood towards the glomerules for filtration and efferent arterioles takes it out after filtration. In both of these images, there is a difference. As you can observe, in the glomerulus, there is yellow color substance, that is proteins. Usually, proteins are not filtered through glomerulus. But if there is a condition or if there is a problem in your kidneys, this proteins can get leaked through this glomerulus. And when that happens, your blood protein level will be decreased, but protein in the urine gets increased. That is why when you have a kidney problem, one of the indications is that your urine gets frothy and that is because there is protein presence inside the urine. This condition is known as proteinuria. When there is an increased protein level in your urine, it is proteinuria. At the same time, the protein level in the blood is reduced. We call it as hypoproteinemia. When your protein level in the urine is increased, we call it as proteinuria. And when the protein level in the blood is reduced, we call it hypoproteinemia. What is renal artery stenosis or RAS? It's a narrowing of artery. As you can see in the image, the arteries that bring blood to the kidney, it is known as renal artery. That artery is narrowed and this causes reduced blood flow to the kidneys. This is what we call renal artery stenosis and AC inhibitors is completely contraindicated in such a condition. AC inhibitors is also contraindicated in pregnancy. Now we look into the metabolism of AC inhibitors. They undergo metabolism in liver and kidney. As I've mentioned before, lisnopril and captopril, they do not undergo metabolism. They are, that is why they are the preferred AC inhibitors for liver patients because they, do not, they don't have to undergo metabolism in the liver. They can directly get metabolized and excreted by the kidney. That is why we prefer lisnopril and captopril for liver patients. Talking about fosinopril, they undergo hepatic conversion and excretion through urine, liver. And they are considered the best AC inhibitors for kidney patient because there is no entry into the kidney. Remember, captopril and lisnopril is good for a liver patient because they do not have to undergo metabolism in the liver. They undergo metabolism and excretion through kidneys. Talking about fosinopril, they are good for kidney patient because they do not enter the kidneys. They undergo metabolism and excretion through liver.
The other drugs, that is enalapril, ramipril, cunalpril, or trandopril, they are pro-drugs and they have to undergo hepatic metabolism and they are excreted through kidneys.